Hey YouTube, Matt here again. So I got a little project I'm going to be starting. I have a nice fireplace in my house and on either side of the fireplace I have these old bench seats. I'm assuming that they were original to the house, uh, all the moldings match. For me they're not really that functional. I would like to have some storage underneath them and I would like it to look more like this idea right here. So with that being said, I'm going to take you guys inside, show you what I'm going to get myself into today. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of exploration, kind of take it apart, see how it was built. And we're going to come up with an idea and a plan on how to make it into a little storage cabinet on either side of the fireplace. All right, guys, you're in my front room here, and I'm going to show you the project we have today. Here is the bench seat, and there's Larry in the corner. This is where Larry usually eats. He eats on the bench seat. We're gonna make this a little more functional today, so I'm gonna take the bench seat off. All right, so the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is, right underneath here is this little detail molding. We're gonna to wanna to take that off. So this molding is probably about 100 years old, so I don't wanna break it, because I'm probably not gonna be able to find it again at Home Depot or Lowell's. So what I like to do is I like to use a little five-in-one tool like this, and very carefully pry up between the molding and the other piece of molding it's attached to, and gently pry it out. This probably will take about five minutes to do just for this one piece of molding. But again, I can't break this. I cannot replace it. And I want to save it because again, it's going to end up saving me money if I don't have to replace molding that I broke because I wasn't careful. So with a little bit of time and patience, you can get moldings off of wood without breaking them. All right, we are so close to taking this off. So again, I've been using a combination of this 501 tool and this little mini pry bar and you just kind of go right behind it and as you get it more of an exposure just lightly press it back and forth and you see that side just broke free i have one more nail right here i do this it should come right off and that is how you take off probably 100 year old detail molding without breaking any of it and i have to take these little itty bitty nails out let me show you the nails that are still inside the wood right here. So I want to take those out without damaging it. So I'm going to show you how I do it. My five and one tool right up on it like that. And then pry against the five and one tool, gripping the duckbill and rolling the head of the duckbill. And then the nail will come right out. This keeps you from using a hammer, which sometimes the hammer can damage the wood and the nail pops right out like that. So now let's start taking off this top. Um, I looked at how this thing was made and it looks like this top sits on top of this stringer right here and two side cleats. There's nothing in the back surprisingly to hold this up, but this is a very thick top. This is about an inch and a quarter. You're not finding this at Home Depot or Goals. This is probably a hundred and some year old oak. Um, the pattern on this is beautiful. So this is probably the most important part of this project that I save this top. And there's Larry in the camera. He is having fun watching me disable his uh, eating spot. So he's not gonna like the hammering. beautiful piece of one inch and a quarter thick oak. All right, so we got that uh, oak top out of the way. We put that off to the side. Uh, now I'm gonna take apart these stringers right here. And... All right, that one came off pretty easy. And again, I'm gonna take those nails out now because I don't want anybody getting hurt. Again, just gonna use my duck bills. I'm gonna pull them out from the back end. I'm gonna rock back and forth. I have no idea where I got these at. These are great pliers. My sister always jokes that she's gonna get, she's gonna steal mine every time over her house. So I have to always make sure I take them with me. If you're watching, Jen, I still got them. All right, and we just saved another piece of, this is probably true one inch oak. You're not getting this at Home Depot. So save more money on this little project. We'll reuse that when we rebuild the cabinet. All right, 
So the only part I'm very nervous about is taking the cleats off the fireplace and the wall because I don't want to cause too much damage to the fireplace or wall. So I'm going to be extremely careful doing these parts. I think I'm going to go after with my 501 tool first, kind of pry it away from the wall a little bit, see if I can get in there. Maybe sneak behind it with a pull bar and just uh, go from there. Uh, this is going to come off pretty easy. It looks like they're right on a stud, so I should be able to pry right against the side of the wall and not do too much damage. But I know I got a stud in the corner here, and I know I have a stud right here because that's where they pin this to. So I'm going to keep note of that for later on when I'm rebuilding this old cabinet so I can secure it to the wall with some uh, little wood blocks and some shims so there's no play between the wood. I should mention that. I am not taking this baseboard off or this baseboard off. This will be hidden behind the wall. Again, I cannot get this baseboard molding anywhere. I've looked, doesn't exist anymore. And I'm not paying to get knives recut to mill this at a mill because that would be a fortune. So I'm gonna hide it behind the new cabinet. That's in the event that someday down the line, because I don't plan on ever moving out of this house. If I want to get take out the cabinet and maybe turn it back to a bench seat or do something else different with this, or just leave this open. I still have the original baseboards to the house. I do not want to remove them. I don't want to cut them. I don't want to do anything that I'm going to damage these baseboards down the road. Really wanted to mention that and make sure that that is in YouTube land that I said that. I'm not touching the baseboard. All right, so I'm going to reposition you guys. This one I'm extremely nervous about because, again, I don't know how they anchor this into the brick. It looks like if I follow it right, they drove it right into a mortar joint. Hmm. You know what? Change the plan. So this fireplace has a little jut out right here that I'm going to have to account for anyway when I build the cabinet to the fireplace. I want it to be as tight as possible so my moldings for the face frame aren't that wide. I'm actually going to keep this cleat on here. I'm going to bring in a little um, saw and just cut this back enough right here so this is going to act as a spacer for my cabinet that I'm eventually going to build. So I just dodged a bullet there. Again, I don't want to do anything to mess with this fireplace. It's very old and I don't want to damage it. And this is the centerpiece of the house besides the amazingly awesome front door, which you guys will definitely see a video sometime in the near future on the restoration of that front door. It's awesome. Now what I did is I marked a line right an inch back from the cabinet, used my square, struck a line down. Now this is a little tip that my dad taught me is to whatever side you do not want that you're gonna cut on, mark with a big X and make it really big so you know what side of the line to cut on because I will be honest, I have cut on the wrong side of the line a few times and I've either cut myself way too short and then I have to start over again or you gotta get creative. So I don't wanna really get too creative with this piece of wood again. It's gonna act as my spacer for the cabinet and I wanna make sure I keep it sort of to what I need it to. So let's get cutting. All right, that went extremely easy. That was very nice cutting through. And I hardly nicked the fireplace. Got a little piece of a uh, mortar right there, got knocked loose, but no big deal. All right, we are all cleaned up here. I vacuumed the floor, cleaned up my area, did a little bit of plaster work. And this is the product that I have now. Nice and clean. Blank slate. All ready for phase two. Again, if you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. Catch me in the next video where I'm going to show you my idea for this space, the cabinet I'm going to build, and the entire process of building the cabinet. See you later, guys. Thank you.